lot, lots of guests lined up. We are in the one hour run up now to the budget and uh, joining us in the studio, Mukul Kasliwal, chairman of the MW Group. Thank you very much, Mukul. Good to see you here in the studios. And also wow. welcoming Mohandas Pai into the panel, Dhruv Sani. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Thank you for staying on with us. Uh, Mr. Hiranandani, my first question is to you, sir. What are you expecting? Mr. Hiranandani, good morning. Can you hear me? Mr. Hiranandani? No, I don't think we have audio link with him. Okay, Mohandas Pai, that question goes to you. What is your, what is your expectation, sir, this morning well, of the finance my, minister, broadly put? My, Anna, my oh, first okay. expectation is, does a full and honest accounting of all expenditure. Coming. Last year, he only budgeted for 4.9% in increase in expenditure. Under budgeted for fertilizer subsidy, food subsidy and fuel subsidy. And the news are that subsidies are increasing by 1 lakh crores. So every year for the last three to four years, expenditure has been under budgeted. Second, I do hope that he restrains some borrowing. This year is borrowing 50,000 crores more, taking it up to 5 lakh crores. Because of excess borrowing, interest rates are going up, inflation is going up, and all of us are getting hurt very badly. Third, if he raises diesel prices and, and uh, petrol prices to reduce the fuel subsidy, and uh, then uh, restraints from increasing taxes on excise and service, service tax because manufacturing is not growing at all and causing greater unemployment, I'll be very happy. I think fiscal consolidation is the key rather than any measure like reducing direct taxes or whatever it is. If it goes on borrowing money at the way it is, India will not grow because investment is getting hurt and innovation goes up. So I would expect these things at the macro level from him in this budget. Dhruv Sani, your expectations, good morning, yeah. your expectations we this morning, like also this government is, like is under severe political pressure, do you think that's going to bear on Pranam Mukherjee? Uh, now, I want to take another uh, track to your other panelists. Uh, inflation has been a bugbear for the government and for the consumer and in that food inflation. And I think that if this government risks a third good monsoon, it's playing very dicely. So agricultural productivity is key. And in that, we need both market reform and something bold. And something, I mean, I'm sure you would suggest, uh, as an alternative, something like FDI in food retail. Just in food retail, we need a shake-up, because without agricultural growth, and with the prices going up, we have the whole chain of reforms can get sidetracked. I don't think the coalition partners or the opposition, <laughs> even if it means FDI in food retail, would mind it because this is something that helps the farmer and the poorer section. But the risk factor in not doing something bold in agriculture is that if we have a bad monsoon, we have uh, high food prices and with the state of the political uh, economy in our country today, that's very, very risky. Mr. Mukul Kasliwal, let's get you in uh, to the debate uh, here. Uh, 1 lakh crore plus uh, additional burden on subsidies, 50,000 crore short on tax collections. What do you think Pranam Mukherjee is going to do in his budget uh, to balance out all of this? Uh, Navika, I think uh, clearly the finance minister needs to come up with something really innovative and out of the box. I think all the expenditures are a given, so I'm not going to comment on that because it's really in the political domain. And I think the loud and clear message coming out it seems is that good economics seems to be bad for politics. That's what I hear all over, uh, across party lines. Having said that, I think uh, there are still many ways in which the finance minister can address the fiscal deficit to finance non-productive expenditure. For instance, uh, you know, this country has a huge amount of gold reserves that are as yet non-monetized. Now, if you look at ways and means of bringing non-productive assets into the real economy, I think that will be a real big shot in the arm and both it will be non-inflationary as well. So I think okay. clearly there are many solutions that are out of the box that the finance minister can come up with. But are you looking at any serious cut in subsidies and that goes to you Piyush Goyal? Are I, you looking at any serious I, cuts I, I in subsidies? I a little bit disagree with this. Good economics and good politics can coexist. Yes, can. We've shown it when we were in power. <laughs> We've shown it in the states that we run. Look at Gujarat. We've got a revenue surplus after many years of deficit before Modi came into power. Chhattisgarh, even Bihar is showing a turnaround story. I think good economics and good politics can coexist. We need to tackle misgovernance. We need to bring administrative reform. We need to stop corruption. When I gave a budget speech in March, you could read it today. I could as well give it today. I predicted a 2 lakh crore gap in the fiscal situation, given what Niranjan said and Mukul said. The subsidies were underprovided. Disinvestment was a misnomer. 
I also had said growth cannot be these levels. It was evident one year ago. Yeah. So we need we need the government to start, as he said, taking certain steps. Spending can be more focused. Cut down the number of schemes. Bring them to cogent, targeted, you know, few sections of society which need support. Don't just fritter away resources in NRHM and Manrega without creating any productive you know, assets. You know, people who are taking the hit across the sectors. I don't. I can't think of any other sector apart from real estate which takes the hit. Across the board, <coughs> overall indicator of where what's happening with the economy. Niranjan, no, but Nadani, before, before that, Mukul uh, here yeah, is yeah. a sufferer of bad politics yeah. because Let, the environment was taken to such a high pitch. I, I take your point. Let's go to Niranjan Hiranandani. Niranjan, I don't yeah. want to give me. I don't want you, Niranjan Hiranandani, to give me a real estate answer. But overall, you know, as a corporate citizen, what is your expectation of the government today in terms of unlocking the potential? This government is trapped today in political dilemma after political dilemma. I, I Do you think, think it has the teeth to cut cut through all those dilemmas and deliver something strong today? Something that maybe you know will surprise the opposition parties. I think uh, I think you can have both. The, you can have the cake and eat it too. I think there are issues which can be solved by tweaking issues which are not going to be cost expensive for the uh, finance minister. Take the home loan segment. The total cost of it is very, very small. But millions of people who have not got houses are not able to get it today. I think what the uh, finance minister needs to do, while looking at the social aspects of it, the economics of the small man and the investor class has to be done, number one. Number two, when you're looking at Narega as a scheme, if you're not going to be able to get people at the construction sites for the purposes of working, then just giving them uh, a compensation while they are sitting idle at their home place is not good because I am not getting construction workers. So on one side, we have people not available for the purposes of construction and on the other side, we are paying social security. I think that imbalance of social security benefits which are going to the common man are unheard of anywhere in the world. When jobs are a begging, and you are not able to do it and you are giving social security, I think that is one thing which is going wrong. On the macro side, secondly, I think we need to take care of it that the balancing should not be at the cost of disinvestment. People do not want to invest today because governments are not able to take quicker and fast decisions in terms of implementation and support the businessman when he gets into difficulty. I think these are two aspects of it which is at a macro level suffering today and fresh investment is not coming into the market. That is deadly uh, I, dangerous for the purposes of growth and I, I think also, we need to do something there. N.K. Singh, member of the Rajya Sabha, former revenue secretary, understands the poli poli politics behind it. Mr. N.K. Singh, what are you hearing? What is the buzz that you are hearing about what, is, what could happen in this government, uh, in this budget? Everybody wants to see a budget that breaks free. But can the government break free of its own political compulsions? Well, I think that I am somewhat sanguine that uh, the, some of the critical things which are needed to be done uh, return to a path of fiscal consolidation, much better management of revenues, uh, rationalization of subsidies, and revival of investor confidence would be the centerpiece of what is going to happen, I think, in the next one hour. I think I'll be brave enough to stick my neck out to say that uh, Mr. Pranab Mukherjee, uh, if I may use the word, can shock and awe by delivering a budget which the economy's compelling needs necessitates and enjoins the responsibility on the government to be able to give to the people of India. Well, but can we have a shock and all budget? If the budgets are made in Delhi, not righteous buildings, then that may happen, but not otherwise. No, but I think you yeah. don't think there can be a shock and all no, budget? But I think NK endorsed some of the comments that we've heard in the morning yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. That this is the one opportunity that the FM has yeah. uh, to have a real good budget. And I just want to say one thing, which is that, you know, the, the, the out of the box suggestion that Mukul has been talking about is actually very important for raising direct tax revenues. True. And you can also bring in money from abroad. You know, by either signing up treaties like you know with the Swiss government or offering an amnesty scheme, and he can spread his ta direct tax net wider by bringing in high-income things, you know, high-income individuals. And finally, 
agricultural income tax has now been talked about for decades yeah. now yeah. you know and agricultural incomes are no more the small and marginal farmer incomes mm. he can give them a higher you know exemption level but then try and bring it the popularity the ratings of the government i mean uh, yeah uh, can i, I, come in I just want to get no, more i make not this i on that What, what, make, make not this, you think there can be a shock in our budget? We can all be surprised here at sitting at 1 o'clock? Well, you know, I think N.K. Singh has his ear to the ground. And N.K. Singh would not talk about shock at all unless he knew something. So that's the first hopeful <laughs> sign I've seen in a long time, <laughs> that this is coming. And what is, what, what is that, this? A, a, a fiscal drastic, fiscal, drastic fiscal consolidation. A fiscal not yeah, much reform. Budget. But drastic fiscal consolidation is coming. Let me, Mr. Let me N. K. Mr. N. K. Singh, do you think uh, you know the su uh, subsidies on diesel? Uh, that's something that Pranab Mukherjee will touch uh, because that's one of the serious reforms and subsidy cuts that the government has been uh, putting off for a while. Well, you know, he cannot have, or you cannot have, a path of credible fiscal consolidation, which clearly leaves out subsidies on petroleum and oil products and subsidies on, for instance, urea. How can you un, uh, take any, a, a, any steps which markets will believe in unless you begin to seriously deal with these kinds of subsidies which is making impossible for oil companies yeah. to survive and which has become impossible for the fish to be managed in a credible way?